This is going to be a rather unusual um, video here. And I'm going to post this prior to my 2018 fall mushrooms. This year, is the beefsteak polypore. Yes, I am online. I'm on my personal computer. I'll get close enough of that for you to read the description. So you'll have to pause that because I don't want to make this video an hour long. Uh, we all are being uh, charged for things of that nature. So you're going to see it's polypore. Now, what this mushroom does is when you cut it, it actually uh, appears to bleed. So there will be a pinkish fluid. So, pause at any time. Yes, these are mushrooms that are found here in Missouri. <clears throat> the beard's tooth, lion's mane, or the hedgehog mushroom. This is another mushroom that I mentioned. And basically what I've done is I've gone through here and I've picked out certain mushrooms that cannot be mistaken for other mushrooms. Um, they grow on trees. So, pause. Let's read the information. As you can see, we have poisonous indications and we have edible indications. This is the red false morel, or what some people call uh, beefsteak mushrooms. Black trumpets. Um, I have mentioned the black trumpet and I've shown video of black trumpets. Yes, I have a bit of a slow internet connection. That is the black trumpet. Um, some of these flavors are yet to be desired uh, for some people to be perfectly honest with you. Um, some of them just really don't have a lot of flavor. The ash tree boltite or bolte? Bolte? There's a scientific name for it. And there's not really a lot of information involving this. Uh, but as I've said in my videos, uh, just what I do is this here. Uh, like for instance, chanterelles and cinnabar chanterelles. Uh, the little red chanterelles that we saw on the trail. Um, I'm going to say this prior. So these we did find and I did point those out and I requested that you research this particular mushroom and I said it is a chanterelle but it is a cinnabar chanterelle and here's the information to the mushroom that you'll find here now you'll have to go through that video in order to <coughs> excuse me get that information these were the uh, singular chanterelles that we did find You can mute that or pause that, not mute it, but pause it in order to get uh, that information. I don't understand why they have black trumpets there, but if you see the undercarriage of all that, and then you can pause through it, but it's actually better just to go to the website. Uh, comb tooth. Here's another variety. Sort of looks like frost or ice on the ground or rotting trees. Some people call them cauliflower mushrooms. Uh, they have a distinct lobster flavor. And of course, what we are after 
is the crown tip coral. And as you see, they show it here growing on a log, but it does grow in uh, rotting tree matter. So what I've done is I did a uh, folder, and I took a picture of that right there. The other thing you can do is enlarge this and then just take a picture of this with the name. Um, I prefer to have the uh, description with it. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to open that up. Here are two mushrooms that look the same. And there's a description there. This is a non-edible mushroom. This is a poisonous mushroom. But you see what that looks like right there. And this is an edible mushroom. And you see what that looks like and you see what the bottom of it looks like. So be very careful with those types of mushrooms. Uh, spore prints and things like that can help out. Uh, this does give information on the color of spore print. Spores magnified or elliptical, rough edged. Spore print is rusty, so it's going to be red. <clears throat> and stink horn. So here's another example of two mushrooms that have. Uh, some interesting characteristics that can be mistaken. This is a poisonous. Uh, this is a Rasula. And this is a Bolti. Or Bolti. Bolti. But you see there's uh, the underneath and the stem are completely different than this. But a spore print is always the best way to go. So we have the false turkey tails, which are the gray. And we have the giant puffball. Not recommended, not edible. Here's the golden chanterelle. Uh, we did leave a lot of these on the trail. Uh, they were pretty thick around the edges. And this is an edible. There's the information right there. the giant puffball and here's the gem studded puffball so it looks like a big wrinkly brain there's your information and then these right here little bitty ones with little holes in them uh, of course uh, when the insides of these mushrooms turn brown some of them yellow some of them green they are no longer edible. Usually, uh, I tend to stay away from uh, mushrooms that have gills. Mantaki mushrooms, or hen of the woods, looks absolutely nothing like chicken of the woods, as you can see. Uh, from the looks of this, if you remember back whenever I pointed out to that mushroom that was growing off of that tree stump, there's some familiarities to that. Okay, so these are the two mushrooms and one particular mushroom that I did point out. Uh, these are the honey mushroom, and this is what they look like when they're small. They have white stalks or stems, and this is the jack-o'-lanterns, and I pointed out some of these. So as they reach maturity, it's very difficult to determine the difference between those two mushrooms. Jellied false coral mushroom. So this is something you gotta be kinda careful with as well. Jelly fungus. So it's uh, a jelly-like fungus. It's not um, firm. 
However, true coral fungus are brittle and break easily, while the jellied false coral is tough and not brittle. And we did also see some lobster mushrooms, which are thick-based, very thick. So you see the splits in it and absorb it. You did. We did see some of these, and it says July to October. And that is an edible mushroom. Of course, we know the morels. This is the uh, oyster. Of course, I haven't really found much of anything that looks identical to this. Um, this shows brown other than white, but that is a gilled mushroom. This is the... Uh, Pale Chicken of the Woods. Uh, I'll let you get a better description. Read that. And we'll scroll down. And that's got kind of a yellow to it. So lemon pepper seasoning. And frying that. Uh, some people boil it. Uh, pale Jelly Roll. Uh, these are the pear-shaped pup balls. Uh, pointed these out. Or they were in abundance. They were kind of small, but they weren't all clustered together like that. So, as you can see, and there was an explanation of that. When the inside of that changes color um, to a greenish color, it's uh, usually best to kind of stay away from that. And here's the pigskin puffball. Uh, this is the poisonous one. As you can see, it's got little spots on it. And then here's information, July to October, fruiting body, so that's the same. But this one has a yellowish brown ball with blackish purple flesh, not white. So here's the ringless honey mushroom. As we showed you the jack-o'-lanterns earlier, these are smaller. And then it gives a description. Spore print is white. And that is a gilled mushroom. Here is a smooth chanterelle. Uh, we saw some of these as well. This is an edible mushroom. It says June to early August. But as you uh, saw in the upcoming video, they were uh, not looking all that good, but they were there. This is the sulfur-colored chicken of the woods, or the sulfur mushroom. And you see there's the turkey tail on the right. We'll get into that here in a second. This is an edible mushroom. Uh, this is a replacement for chicken. It tastes exactly like chicken. Uh, here's two distinct pictures. So colors can vary, but shape and the thickness, some of them are a little thinner, some of them are a little thicker, but these, these are like pancake thickness. Spore print is white. This is a non-gilled mushroom. These are huge clusters. Um, I've literally picked, uh, I would say, one cluster, close to 25 pounds with one cluster, and I still left some on the tree. The turkey tails, which is something that I'm always going on about, uh, because they're always in abundance. My fingers in the frame there. <clears throat> so there's what they look like. Little ears. As it says, true turkey tails are easy to recognize. The margin is always lightest in color. So that would be the outside margin. Whitish yellow, no stock present. So those uh, turkey tails are always my indication on what's going on uh, out in the woods. And as you see, there's something similar to it, and it seems to be by itself. And witch's butter, 
I uh, do believe I've shown you all some pictures of witch's butter. Could have been hair's ear. This is an edible mushroom. And then the violet tooth polypore is something else that can be mistaken for the turkey tails. But the outside is brown. Here's the wood ear. I have shown this one on several occasions. It looks like an ear. It is an edible mushroom. Spore print is white. Of course, we've gone through the morel mushroom, so let's go back to the first page. This is the um, Missouri Conservation Department mushroom. Uh, what you want to type up here in the search is edible mushrooms, and then you'll be uh, sent to, so like for instance right here, go to mushroom hunting MCD discovered nature and that will shoot you over to another page and by this time you're already upset and depressed because you can't find anything but then you go down here it says check out our field guide to Missouri mushrooms and this is what we come up with right here so um, if you have an SD card dedicated to this, uh, what you can do is you can actually click on it, open a page. When the page opens up, you take your cell phone and you get real close, like this right here, and you snap a picture of that. And then while you're out in the woods, all you got to do is just flip through pictures. Um, as I've said before, in many of my other videos, uh, keep it simple. Uh, if you have to stick to a spore print and things of that nature, to where you have to determine um, what kind of food it is, if it's edible or if it's not edible, uh, pick it, go back home, do a spore print, remember the location or mark the location on your GPS on your phone. Cell phones are very helpful uh, with picking morel mushrooms, as I've pointed out in other videos. But I'm going to go ahead and post this video. prior to posting the uh, actual hunt video itself for the crown tip coral. Um, there is a look-alike for it, yes, um, but there's only one, and if you remember The particular mushroom in the video, or as soon as you see the mushroom in the video, that's kind of sulfur colored. It's got kind of a weird looking stem to it, and it looks kind of different. Um, but these structures right here are what you're looking for. And uh, I showed you the structures uh, in the video. Uh, I showed you how it kind of fell apart and how brittle it was, and how, quote unquote, I did not run across any false ones which was fortunate, but yes, you have to look out for something of, of that nature. Um, and as it says in the description, it is a very tough mushroom. It is not brittle. It will not fall apart. So this is uh, from the Missouri Department of Conver Conservation. Uh, this information is uh, true and factual through the Missouri Department of Conservation. If the information that I have given you here is false, please contact the Missouri Department of Conservation. Uh, I am not falsifying information. I am not giving you false information. As you can see right there in white print, it gives a description of the mushroom and it says edible. Um, so, always test your mushrooms. Uh, it always it, it does explain test your mushrooms take a piece of it cook it do what you need to do eat it put the rest of it in the refrigerator uh, so if you have an allergic reaction to it you can take that to the emergency room with you uh, but um, we're foraging so it's uh, good to know uh, good to know what it is that you're out there hunting before you get into a situation where you have to get out there and hunt it um, so this way you know what you can eat and what you can't eat.
Uh, that way, if you take a look at that fruiting body, you're going to be able to identify it by looking at it. Um, like, for instance, uh, when I first started mushroom hunting, the only thing that I knew about was this. Not necessarily black morels. The only thing that I knew was the yellow morels. I did not know anything. I didn't know the half free. I didn't know anything about golden chanterelles. I didn't know anything about cinnabars. I didn't know any information about that. I absolutely did not know anything about the beefsteak polypore, um, which is this right here. Uh, actually, I went out in the woods and I started looking for that particular mushroom around that time of year. Uh, it was drizzly outside. We had about uh, three weeks of drizzly weather. I went out there, I found a mushroom, chopped it up, threw it in the frying pan. It was a bit past its prime. It was very chewy, um, but it tasted exactly like beef. That's why they call it the beefsteak polypore. The next mushroom uh, that I ran across uh, was the beer tooth or the hedgehog. Beard tooth or the hedgehog, they both sort of look the same. Uh, I like to call them lion's mane, but this mushroom right here, uh, this has medicinal purposes behind it. So this one actually helps uh, regenerate um, brain damage, uh, central nervous system disorder damage, um, things of that nature. They're actually still researching uh, that mushroom for its uh, benefits. You can actually go online and find a pill form of this mushroom because it's so beneficial. So that mushroom right there particularly uh, was a big, uh, big helper with me uh, with a lot of my issues. Uh, so I'm not going to blow the whistle on this one, but I used to shake pretty bad. Um, after about three seasons of consuming that mushroom, I no longer shake. The cinnabar chanterelles um, and the regular chanterelles uh, are something that I'm, I'm experimenting with and adding to my diet to see what kind of flavors. They're something different. Um, some people just go out and they find chanterelles themselves, uh, and they just just eat chanterelles. Uh, there's a lot of people that only just know what a chanterelle is or the cinnabars. Um, and then there's people out there that will fight you for the, the cinnabar chanterelles versus the golden chanterelles. But uh, this website right here is uh, where all of this information comes from. It's uh, very easily accessible uh, online, uh, like I said. Click on it. Main picture comes up. Save it to your phone. Or go on the website with your phone and uh, do it that way. So the video you're going to watch here in a few minutes is going to be about the crown tip coral mushrooms. Um, yes, I had to learn this. Uh, I had different resources for learning this than most people. I didn't have somebody take me out in the woods and point things out. Um, I had picture references on my phone, so every time I was out in the woods and I looked down and saw a mushroom, I went straight to my phone, checked my picture references, uh, identified that mushroom. If I had to um, do a spore print, I basically... Excuse me, I got a butterfinger wrapper there. I took my knife. Uh, which was in its sheath right there, and uh, chopped it down, put it in a bag, brought it home. Sometimes the spore print was already in the bag. Um, sometimes all you get to do is just take the spore print, put it in your dashboard of your vehicle, uh, finish off your hike or your walk, and boom, uh, you have a spore print. Um, so I've even heard about some people taking a bag, put it in the top of their backpack, um, doing a spore print, using the bag as a poo bag <laughs> or a trash bag of course you don't want to put food in that after that spore is in that bag and then as they went through their hike you know they took uh, a little bit of oil and fried up some fresh mushrooms uh, you know what I'm saying so uh, as I had said before uh, I have no liability for anybody getting sick the crown tip coral mushrooms right there it shows edible and there is uh, one you do need to be careful with uh, and I have showed that uh, but this is information from the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, this is not my own personal research I will not share my own personal research on what can be eaten or what cannot be eaten but I'm going to tell you this quote unquote there are much, some mushrooms that people can stomach and some mushrooms people can't stomach 
Uh, I'm sure you've heard the, uh, the folklore about the uh, false morel mushroom, the big brain looking thing. Uh, some people say you can eat them, but you just have to cook them, or you have to boil them to get the sulfur content down low. Um, you do so at your own risk. I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, that's up to you. I've never eaten them. I don't plan on eating them. Uh, but, you know, there's uh, things in this world that you eat them, and then five years later, the damage uh, becomes present. So you do need to be careful about things. But like I said, this is the Missouri Department of Conservation's information. This is the information they have on their website. Uh, and this is an uh, explanation of what we saw or what we're about to see in the woods. This is Russ Chamberlain. Uh, thank you and have an amazing night.